Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere our new TV series or movie that is debuting here in Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland where Irish eyes are smiling. And up for discussion this week, it's back once more, season six of Young Sheldon on Channel E4 hits our screens. 127 episodes so far in this phenom phenomenon series. It was supposed to be cast off as maybe uh, a spin-off of the Big Bang Theory that might last one season or two seasons, but it's gone on to flourish for a full six seasons. As you know, it stars the wonderfully gifted, talented young actor Ian Armitage as Sheldon Cooper. Also alongside him playing his sister is Reagan Revort and older brother Montana Jordan. And in the parents, Zoe Perry, Lance Barber, are the lead sort of roles, but it's so, so many great supporting actors, including Wallace Shawn, uh, Craig T. Nelson, Emily Osmond, and our special guest this evening, the one and only, the iconic Rex Lynn, who plays the character Principal Peterson. And uh, Woo! Rex, what's it like uh, to be a recurring uh, actor in this uh, comedy uh, gold and comedy sensation that, dare I say, when people heard about it, first of all, they said to themselves, well, that's not going to take off. It might last for a season or so. But yet, after six seasons, uh, it's really flourished and it's really taken on a life of its own. And it's got its own audience and its own fan base separate from Big Bang Theory. Yeah, you, you know, it's interesting. Uh, it's It really has a great way to put it. It's taken on a life of its own. Uh, and I, I think that uh, it's gone through different phases. You know, at first, uh, my friends were, uh, they watched a little bit of it the first season and and, uh, and I loved it from the start. Uh, and they were saying, well, we're really not, it's kind of a cool show, but we're really not into kids shows, you know, but it's, I'm glad you're on it. And then they watch it a little bit longer and they're going, uh, this isn't entirely a kids show. We just figured out, I said, that's what I've been trying to tell you. This show more than any show I've ever worked on really has more to offer for every age group. And, and now they've uh, going into the sixth season. I mean, you know, it's every level, uh, all ages. And, and that's why some of my friends have teenagers now that are hooked on young Sheldon who wouldn't happen to watch it before they'd like, yeah, I don't, I don't watch kids shows, but it's so great. And, and, as a matter of fact, I have to say this one story, uh, tell you this one story. I was at the gas station last year, and uh, uh, Principal Peterson, the character that I play, hadn't been on in like, I think like six or seven episodes. I'm filling my car up with gas, and this woman keeps staring at me. And keeps staring. And I get recognized for a lot of other things, you know, uh, uh, a lot. I don't mean that pretentiously. I just do. Uh, yeah. And she kept staring at me and I said, what? And she goes, when in the hell are we going to see Principal Peterson? We miss our Principal Peterson. And I want, I, I said, you watch? She said, oh my gosh, my husband and I, every Thursday night, we fix a drink. We sit down in front of young Sheldon. And this girl's probably mid thirties. Uh, and, and, and she said, you're one of our favorite characters. And I said, oh, God bless you and God bless your goldfish and your family and every your pets, everything. And she gave me a big hug and she said, well, we look forward to seeing it. The point of the story is, is it just, it's just affected everybody from nine year olds to 80 year olds. People watch this show. Rex, obviously you've been in an awful lot of projects down through the years, TV series, comedies, movies as well. In terms of supporting cast and giving them backstories and depth to their characters in terms of making a, a show successful. When we look at classic shows, take Married with Children, the Bundy family, the supporting cast in terms of that, the Darcy's, the neighbours, everything, such iconic characters in, the, in their own right. How important is it that maybe when you're producing a show that you don't fixate entirely on the family, that the whole neighbourhood, the whole village, they all have to stand on their own two feet and merit? Because if you just focus within the home, sort of you're closing your boundaries there, I say. Absolutely. Well, that's the genius uh, of Steve Malero. And Chuck Lorre, both they they have given us 
the found the really the foundation of young Sheldon is the home, what you just talked about. That's the foundation. And then everything goes from there. Just it just like tentacles that goes out. And and they've done a masterful job of having all of these little pockets of ecosystems of of other characters that come in and 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 a, and, and and it affects the foundation. You know, it affects George and Mary and 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 the kids and everything. So they've done they've done such a great job doing it that that that's the main reason. Uh, and the writing is amazing. The writing, the whole cast is amazing. But that's the reason it's it's attracted so many different age groups because it's not like I said, it's not just a children's movie, uh, uh, series. It's for everybody. And and you can't get that unless you expand out of that foundation of their home and bring in other characters and have it affect the home. And 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 they've done a masterful job of it, man. I I I still love the show. I, I really really love. I've seen every episode. I really really like it. I've become really close with most of the cast. That uh, I say most of some I haven't worked with, but but uh, it's been it. I tell you what's been interesting for me. The first episode ever of Young Sheldon, I was in, and I have I have in that plays Young Sheldon. I have Young Sheldon in my office, and then I have all the teachers in the office, and all the teachers are talking or complaining about Sheldon, and uh, so Ian was just like this little kid, man. I mean, he really was, and he'd say, "Good morning, Mister Lynn." And I say, you can call me Rex. I'm not Mr. Lynn. Now I'm walking down the hallway. He passes me going, hey, dude. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gone from good morning, Mr. Lynn, to hey, dude, did I tell you I'm a second degree black belt in karate? I'm like, what? Get man. Stop talking so low, man. You know, so it's been a great adventure to watch him grow yeah. and how they, in the context of the script, how they've character uh blossom in all kinds of ways and and uh, i they put together an amazing cast and i i'm really proud to be a part of it really yeah am. it's it's so amazing when you mentioned that when child actors start off for their first sort of project they're so courteous they're so polite they're sort of instructed not to step a foot wrong but once after a few seasons they find their comfort zone he's almost treating you like uh a guy that he's neighborly walk out and say, Hey Joe, how are you today? Uh what what did you see the match last night <laughs> or something like that? Yeah. It's a uh, you know, as my an dear actor, friend, you must love dear. that. You must love that human element when they're able to interact with you like that. that, is oh, all oh, that. Oh, yes, yeah. sir, no, sir. Yeah, you know, in all these different characters that come in, one of my favorites is uh, my dear friend, Melissa Peterman, you mm -hmm. know, uh, who plays next door, uh, Brenda, but she, she's just uh, so good in it. They're, they're, everybody's so good in it, but there are so many great characters that they've introduced and really great actors. And uh, it's just not only is it one of my favorite shows of all time, uh, but the for me as an actor to be able to work with the people that I'm working with, and I I swear, man, Lance Barber that plays George, I tell you, man, he has grown into this. His timing is unbelievable. He 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 is just developed into this amazing. Uh, character on the show. I just, I love watching him constantly. And he's a dear friend of mine now, and I'm proud to say that, but uh, he he's one of my favorites. And Rex, when you were initially cast him in this role, I mean, you start to say, yeah, I'll take on that. I'll take on Principal Peterson. What ideas jumped off the script for you to say, right, that's the direction I'm going to take it? And did it give you an awful lot of creative freedom as well in terms of the character, in terms of the angles or the approach that you want to take it on. And was that very important for you to signing on that? Yes. Uh, I need my voice to be heard here in terms of what I see in terms of principal Peterson. Yeah, no, Steve's been great. He's been, he's allowed a lot of freedom. Uh, we, we discussed the character and, but, but we really didn't know initially what direction he was going to take uh, with the character and, we really didn't know because at the time, Principal Peterson was married. 
then over the course of time, he's divorced. And then he becomes a close friend of George's, even though he's an employee of his, uh, he's the, uh, George is the football coach. And, uh, but we develop a good relationship. It was very clear from the start that uh, Steve wanted Principal Peterson to be an integral part of, of the show. And, and he, and he, let me know that it's just, he didn't really know at the time what direction it was going to take. And I didn't care. I just wanted to be principal Peterson on the show. And and so my role gradually uh, got bigger and bigger, you know, and, 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 and they really put me in the middle of, you know, some family things. And, and uh, so principal Peterson ends up being sort of an anchor, you know, and there, especially for George, uh, a good friend and a confidant, but also ha- having to be having that complexity of also being his boss. So, you know, I'm hiring and firing, uh, but we're still talking about life and struggles and all that stuff. So what Steve did with Tom, with, uh, with uh, uh, principal Peterson for me has been fantastic as an actor. Really, really. He's been, he's given me a lot of freedom, uh, as the years go on and, and uh, it's been great. It's just really been great. And Rex, uh, do you like those sort of recurring roles where they maybe have maybe episodes for you, maybe for two or three episodes and they might give you a, a phone call and say, Hey Rex, we're, we're shooting season two, maybe three or four episodes down the line. We would like you to come in for maybe four to five weeks uh, to shoot these one or two or three episodes for this season. And uh, we might see you again towards the, the end of the year. Do you sort of like that? And was there certain times they came knocking at your door where you were starting out on another project or tied to project? And when they said, right, we'll come back to you later, Rex, uh, we'll veer towards this sort of storyline towards the end of the season. And uh, I imagine playing those recurring roles, there can be clashes at times. Uh, you know, it's a great, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I never really got a lot of uh, uh, warning uh, as it were that I was going to be on the show. It was a pretty, pretty uh, short time frame that they would uh, say, Hey, we want you for the next episode. And that was great. I was luckily always available always wanted to be available but last year uh, i've got this I've, I've still got it right now i've got this uh, goatee but last year i did a um uh series with my girlfriend reba and uh, we did a series called big sky and yeah. uh um and reba and i had met we've known each other for 30 uh well since 1991 and uh and then she got cast as june in young sheldon and so that's how we ended up getting together and we have not missed a day together since uh but um we were doing big sky and i was going to be doing uh, 13 episodes of it and we were right in the middle of filming in new mexico and i get a call they want you on young sheldon and i panicked because i i couldn't shave this I can't shave this and go back and do young Sheldon for four, two or three days. And then go back to New Mexico. I can't do it. So I called Steve. I was so worried. I literally lost sleep over it. I thought I will never be on young Sheldon again because of my goatee. So I texted Steve and I said, Steve, I I can't get rid of this. They're going to allow for my schedule for me to go to Los Angeles and, and do young Sheldon and then come back on big sky. Elwood Reed, the showrunner, was great about that. He, he was really great. He said, absolutely. We, our kids love young Sheldon. But I said, Steve, I, I can't shave it. And he said, well, don't worry about it. I mean, so Principal Peterson, and his uh, his idea was it's been the summer break. Principal Peterson is now divorced, living in a, an apartment. And he decides over the summer to grow a goatee. So we're not even going to mention it. It's just going to be. So I ended up doing in the sixth season. My, I've got, uh, I've got this goatee, uh, but um, to answer your question back to that, it was all, it's always, I was always paranoid that I would, I would be working on something and not be able to go back on Young Sheldon, but it's really worked itself out great. So I've been really, really lucky, really fortunate uh, to be able to, to, for the most part, go back when they asked me to go back. 
And Rex, I'm just going to take you away from young Sheldon. And uh, this is probably going to bring tears to your eyes when I mentioned that it's finally came to a close. But God, it's been some roller coaster. Better call Saul, uh, the last sort of airing of it. And uh, I suppose great things can go on forever, can they? I uh, know, man. I tell you, I had such a... And even then, Steve Steve Malero was so accommodating. You know, Ed Begley, Ed Begley Jr., is on Young Sheldon, but he was also on Better Call Saul. So we would talk together, go to dinner in New Mexico, and then he'd have to catch a plane or get in the car and go because he had to do an episode of Young Sheldon, or I would. But um, Better Call Saul was one of the great experiences for me in, in New Mexico, and I loved Breaking Bad. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. And to be able to to be a part of of, of – Better Call Saul was a dream come true. I ended up doing, I think, 18 episodes, working with Ray Seahorn. Oh, my God, she's the best ever. And and, and everybody there working with Kara and uh, Dennis. And, uh, 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 it was just, and, and Bob, I finally got to work with Bob. It was just, a, it was a great experience. And, and uh, I hated to see it go because, I tell you, some of my friends reminded me about this, and, and I think you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. I had some friends working on some movies, and I'd say, man, I'm really jealous you're working on that location. And way to go. And they go, uh, dude, you're working on Young Sheldon and Better Call Saul. Don't tell me. Don't give me that. You know, you, you're doing just fine where you are. And John Lithgow, my dear friend John Lithgow, I did oh, my first just- movie with did my first movie with John called Cliffhanger. We've been best friends ever since. He loves young Sheldon. He loves Better Call Saul. And one night he texted me, and it was so great. He said, I just want to remind you that you're on two of the smartest shows on television. And he said, congratulations. Just, uh, just out of the blue. And it made me realize, you know, I never took – one day, I've never taken one day of Young Sheldon for granted or Better Call Saul. I've just been really, really fortunate. It was great. Rex, you'll have to put me in touch with your best friend, uh, John Licko. I have so many stories to talk to him about Third Rock from the Sun. And, uh, if you can do that, I would be amazed uh, sometime oh, in your future. I can I can talk to him about that. <laughs> he, he's up in, on vacation right now. He's been doing The Old Man with yeah. uh, Jeff Bridges. But uh, he, he's uh, he's on vacation right now. But I'll let him know that you want to talk to him. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely. You can talk that down 100% sure. We move Art Rain and Snow to make that happen. Uh, Rex, before I let you go, you mentioned before you came on air about Africa and Ireland as being the next two protocols. Uh, are they sort of, I don't want to put the hex on you, but are they sort of two bucket list wishes for you, dare I say, or is bucket list uh, the wrong word to be using? Is, I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, is uh, Are there sort of two wishes for you on your bucket list in terms of things uh, left to oh, do? Yeah, or yeah. Is, uh, is bucket list the wrong word to be using? No, no, I, I, I absolutely. I have, I'm Scottish Irish anyway. I have dreamt of going to Ireland all these years and I am embarrassed at 67 years old. Well, I, what am I saying? I'm 66. I'll be 67 pretty soon. At 66 years old, I'm well, embarrassed to say chicken. I've never been. You're only a young spring chicken. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I'm embarrassed to say I've never been to Ireland, and my dream, other dream trip is Africa. So uh, Reba and I are going to try to do an African trip next summer, and we're going to tie in Ireland. Uh, uh, and I, I'm, I just can't wait. I love the history of Ireland. I, I, I hope that I get to go all over Ireland, and uh, I, I just love, love the Irish people. And uh, I really can't wait to to get over there. And and I'm glad. Uh, so uh, am I correct in saying that is the sixth season of Young Sheldon about to start in Ireland? Is it about to yes. air? Yes, sixth season, yes, on Channel E4 here in Ireland, yeah. Oh, great. Great, good deal. I, I'm uh, Well, now listen, you have to take me. I'm a foodie. I love yeah. food and I love Irish food. So you got to take me. I'm going to make sure you promise me to do this. When I when I go with Reba, we're going to get in touch with you. You got to take me to your favorite place to eat Irish food, your very favorite. 
Okay, okay. It's almost like a trade-off. It's almost like a trade-off. Uh, Rex, for the final start to 30 seconds, you might enlighten our viewers, our listeners, why they should tune in for season six of uh season six of Young Sheldon Sheldon on channel E4. And before I do that, Rex, I'm gonna tell you the place. Uh the place is called Dirty Nellies. It's beside uh, Bunratty Castle and Folk Park in County Clare. It's a modern uh, 1600 castle that does uh, medieval banquets uh, from the Irish sort of the medieval sort of history. So they've put on three course meals with Irish dancing and sex music all in all within a real life castle. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love it. And, I, and also... And listen, I will say this. I'm so jealous of all the people in Ireland that are watching Young Sheldon because all I got to say about season six, guys, is you better buckle up, Buttercup, because things are changing up now, baby. On that note, Rex Lynn, an absolute pleasure talking to you on the airways as we look in joyfully ahead. Season six of Young Sheldon, Rex Lane plays the character Princel Peterson on Channel E4. But for the moment, Rex, for me, Jim Conlon, to you, Rex Lane, stay safe, take care, God bless, and uh, do stay in touch with Niall Horan. He'll point you in the right direction. But for the moment, uh, Rex, take care and goodbye, sir. Lots of love, brother. God bless you. God bless, Rex.